you have a lot of versatility in the room. You have some guys who just play safety. You have some guys who can play safety and backer. You're going to see some of those safeties playing nickel at times. So um, it's a very good competitive group that make each other better every day. Where do you see uh, Jalen Smith? He's a he's a defensive back. <laughs> We challenged him to learn the entire defense because from a skill set standpoint, he's a guy who can play corner, he can play nickel, he can play safety, he can play dime. You know, he can kind of play all those spots. So um, the one, um, you obviously want players healthy, but the one silver lining with him not being able to practice a lot of spring was he was locked into the play book, and we were able to rep a lot of other guys. So now that we have him for camp, you know, again, we've challenged him to be able to play multiple spots. So you'll see him moving around day to day. And um, where he'll be in the ball, that kind of depends probably on how the rest of the defensive backs turn out and who they're playing also. Doug was mentioning that you were mentioning that this game is very collaborative. Because obviously you have four coordinators on the staff. How is this group scheme sort of in the last few months taking on identity? You know, what, what Eric is trying to do, what Doug is trying to do. really started back in like February and March, you know, those long meetings and all the talks with the staff. I'm just an information guy, so I don't want to come in and say, hey, this is what we're doing, this is how we're doing it, and I want to say, this is what I did, this is how I did it, and now I want to hear how other people have done it, and now let's come up collectively with the best way to do it for this team this year. And that's kind of what we did with everything from the terminology, to our fronts, to our coverages, to um, to our pressures, you know, we try to make everything as collaborative as we can because I want this to be everyone's game, not just mine. It feels like within that, it feels like within that, you know, there's, there's this is predicated a lot of versatility, you know, yeah. the back and what have you. Like, how is that in the last few months of the scheme that's taken kind of been an emphasis in terms of, you know, guys need to know how to play in all the multiple spots, you yeah. train guys up and what I need and what ultimately do you feel like that will do for the Seals and the I think, I think June and July, the guys, the strides the guys made in the playbook went a long ways because in order to be versatile, you need to know multiple positions are doing. So um, that's why we install slow. That's why we always try to install conceptually. You want guys to understand the big picture, but um, it takes it takes time. I don't think you can just go out there day one and say, hey, you're playing this position and that position. So. Um, Right now, I think we're a little bit ahead of where I thought we'd be because the guys, again, in June and July, they made great strides as far as not just what they did with us, but they did a lot of work on their own where guys challenge themselves like, no, like, I play defense tackle, but I want to know the entire defensive front. So I'm going to take this summer and learn the entire front. I know I play corner, but I need to know what the nickel does because there's a chance where if there's injuries going on, I'm going to put the next best DB on the field. That might be you. So they kind of took that up. Uh, challenge and uh, I would say the summer months we've taken a big stride as far as guys mastering their primary position but also learning the entire balls. You mentioned in the spring when you don't find like, leaders to help get you through that, that summer because there's so much time you're away. Were there guys that, that you know kind of stepped up and took on that? Yeah, like having a guy like Kamari helped a lot. You know, he's familiar in the scheme. Um, he helped accelerate the scheme on the back end. Having guys like Achille and Easton, they came in and just, for guys who were new, who came here at the same time as me, they had an immediate impact on the team. So it's just been cool to see them kind of grow throughout spring and now and kind of see like where their role is now on the team for guys who just got here. Is Grady uh, another player who kind of fits that deep at the back title to where you might play multiple Yes, he's a guy, again, he can play corner, he can play nickel. Um, he probably wouldn't play in that safety as much, but from a skill set standpoint, he absolutely could, yeah. I, um, you've talked about, you know, kind of seeing your defense step ahead. How have you just seen, like, players buying into your system and wanting to learn? I know that Eric Henderson talked about his defensive line being first and knowledge-less this summer. Just what have you seen from guys in the film room wanting to get that? I feel like when we first got here, it's natural for them to all be thirsty for something new. So the spring was super exciting because of that. The biggest difference I felt like was that June and July months when they're not with us quite as much. You know, they're with the strength staff. 
we were with them probably like once or twice a week, but they still had that same hunger, they still had that same thirst. And you saw um, you just saw them make those strides in June and July that I didn't expect them to make from a mental standpoint. In the spring, you talked about how kind of like the upload process for the system was deliberately slow. Mm -hmm. What's it going to be like training camp? You know, we still probably go slower than most, but training camp we do speed it up some. You know, spring you practice every other day. You have long walkthroughs. In training camp, you know, we're we're every day, so it does speed up some. But we still try to go at a slow pace. Um, we try not to install too much in a day, and when we do install, we try to make sure that all the calls are kind of in the, the same. Group. Coach, when you have guys uh, like John and Kamari uh, that come with you, who played under you, is it more important for those guys to to help the other guys with the X's and O's, or more the attitude that you kind of want to play? More, a combination of both, but more the attitude because again, like scheme is scheme. Um, I must say, like if you take the, the last ten national champions, the last ten Super Bowl champs, those are probably ten different defensive schemes. There's a lot of ways to play good defense, but consistently, you know, look at how those teams play. You know, I'm a big believer. It's not about what you do; it's about how you do it. It's an attitude, it's a mentality, and it's not just something that you carry on Saturdays. It has to be with you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because if you don't do it in practice, it doesn't show up on the games. Uh, two years ago, Alex Grinch was sitting there, and he talked about how his two top priorities on defense were forcing turnovers and stopping the run. In that vein, what are your top two priorities? Stopping the run and affecting the quarterback. What's it been like for you to watch this defensive system kind of become so popular this offseason, kind of spread you know, throughout the NFL, college, a lot of teams have had success with it. What's it been like for you to kind of watch it grow? You know, it's the cool thing about this game is like the scheme has enough flexibility in it that, in my opinion, when I watch people who come from this game, it looks like we all run different schemes. Like when I watched Michigan last year, it doesn't look like UCLA. When I watch um, some Baltimore stuff, it looks different than Michigan. I'm sure Seattle stuff's going to look a little bit different. So everyone kind of has their own twist on it. But it's cool because, um, like I said, there's ideas you can take from everyone. But at the same time, we all have our different personalities and all have a different twist on this game. You talked about kind of uh, fitting around the pieces, right? Like you have guys and you find the best way to use them rather than shove them into this game. Are there guys where you kind of thought all summer, hey, that's an interesting guy where he can do a bunch of different things? I mean, Eric Gentry's always it's, been a guy. Like here. He's a guy, again, like, it's fun because you can try to challenge yourself to be creative. Like, how can we best utilize this guy's skill set? As opposed to having him just doing the same thing all the time because he is such a unique player. So guys like him, Jalen Smith wasn't with us all spring, but I'm excited about him because he's a guy, you know, guys that can just play all across the board. I know that you and Eric Henderson have had, have, have had some crossing in past, like, yeah. you know, coaching. But what is it now like to be at USC together, you're coaching together back, and now you're in the Big Ten for the first time this season? It's awesome. You know, I've worked with him for a year when I was with the Chargers. I was super impressed with him as a person and a coach. When I went to Houston, he went to the Rams, and we stayed in touch. And it's, it's just been cool to see him grow as a coach. So when I got this job, he was the very first person I called because I knew that, one, the front was the priority, and two, you know, he's one of, if not the best defense line coach in the country. So I'm super excited about him. Jalen's a versatile guy. Have you figured out where you want to use him? He's going to play defensive back. So <laughs> we're teaching him the entire defense. Um, and I was telling these guys, you know, the one silver lining with him not being able to practice a lot in the spring was he was in the playbook. So, you know, he's um, we challenged him, you need to know corner, you need to know nickel, you need to know safety, you need to know dime because you have the skill set to play all those spots. And depending on who we're playing and who we have available, you probably are going to end up playing all those spots at some point. Some time in the year. What, what, what is it about that makes them more versatile than some other guys? For first off, for a guy his size, so tackle. So you, know, you look how you look at the way he tackles, how he gets off blocks. You're not afraid to play him in the box. Um, he's super twitchy. He can match up on slots, and he has a speed to play on the outside. With greedy. So he'll play corner and nickel both. Again, just the versatility. The, 
he just offers us something from a skill set standpoint that we don't quite have as far as, you know, he's super, super sticky in coverage. Um, he, again, he, he can play multiple spots. He can blitz. Very, very smart. So, super excited about him. Again, for a guy who wasn't here in spring, if you talk to him compared to all these guys, he knows the defense just as well. He worked his tail off. There's been so much kind of outside talk about the defensive line, the Big Ten kind of pulled up. Do you, do you how, I guess, what's your confidence level in that group across the front as you come into the fall camp and make your year the season? I'm confident. You know, we challenge all those guys to hit certain weights depending on you know who that individual was. Coach Wiley did a great job, and all those guys that hit those weights, um, they're they're super excited to get back out there on the field. They've been diving in the playbook. Like I said, they've challenged themselves not just to learn their spot, but to know what everyone up front's doing, so that way we can be as multiple up front as we can be. And uh, I'm super excited and confident about that. Gavin was a new addition for yeah. this offseason. What, what does he bring that you guys like about He's a veteran, leadership, and just the way he plays. When he plays the game the right way, he's one of those guys where I want all the freshmen to watch the way he does everything. Watch him do drills, watch him in team, just watch how he does everything. And him and him. He didn't have Zion in the spring. I mean, maybe we get a sense for what kind of player he is and how he might fit in. Heard a lot of good things about him. Obviously, watched his tape um, from last year. And then he was a guy who was in my hip pocket all spring, you know, asking questions about the defense, asking questions. He was locked in. He's about as locked in as you can get now. So I know he's super eager to get out there on the field to show what he can do, and we're super excited. But again, he's a guy that has the versatility to where, yes, he can play safety, but he has the, the strength and size where he can do some stuff in the box as well. Thank you. It, you have so many options at both corner and safety. How do you kind of characterize that competition there? Is it, do you even know in your head yet how it's going to look come the first game? I do not. I, I wish I did. I, I, I do not, though. Um, it's a good problem to have, though. So, again, we just challenge guys to listen, in camp, you're going to play two or three spots. There's going to be days you might be with the ones, days you might be with the twos. Just focus on getting better and better each day. And at the end of camp, we're going to we'll have a good grasp of, okay, what is the best um, group as far as matching this guy up with this guy? Because there are, um, you know, six, seven, eight guys that you feel confident out there yeah. playing with. Um, lastly for me, Brandon Shelby has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger through the offseason. He's uh, a real breakout special guy. What, what, what do you expect from him this year? Super excited yeah. about him. You know, he uh, showed flashes last year, had a good spring. Um, he's gotten bigger. I'm super excited about him. What, what, what's, what's the thing that he has to do to kind of unlock his full potential? Just, I, I would say just keep on just – developing. I think he's on the right path. I think uh, what Nua and Coach Anderson have done with him this spring, you saw him take that next step. I think he needs to keep on going on the path he's been on. You had, you had success getting the best out of your players when you were at the Chargers. Joey Bosa had 12 and a half sacks. And Melvin, Grant, Melvin Ingram also had 10 plus sacks. And then with UCLA last year, you produced basically a top 15 draft pick. What have you found the best ways to be able to get the best out of your guys and how are you doing here at USC? Again, we put a big emphasis on, you know, scheme is scheme, but it's about how you play, um, especially up front, you know. So it's a lot of it's a mentality, a lot of it's an attitude. Um, we try to put those guys in the best positions as far as matchups, as far as, you know, can we take advantage of their protection tendencies. And always try to put them in the best position possible. But at the end of the day, they go out there and they make the plays. Yeah. Thank you, Coach Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, good meeting you. Thank you.